Hi, I'm Oscar, and today I'm going to be taking a look at this here, the Sony ECM CG60 shotgun microphone. Okay, so I've had this shotgun microphone for about six months now, and I've been using it as my primary audio source. I've done running gun with this, I've done film stuff with this, I've done documentary style stuff with this, although there is a few things that I wish this microphone had, which I'll get into later on in this video. So first off, let's take a look at some of the physical aspects of this microphone. So the build quality is really nice. It's a metal on the outside. It's cold to touch and it feels really premium. And then on the very tip of the microphone, there is a plastic cap. And on the other end of the microphone, there is a um, rubberized um, cable thingy. In the box with this microphone, you'll get the microphone itself, a shock mount and a dead cap. Now, the dead cap is extremely useful and is really good for wind noise. As I said, I've had it outside in sports games and it's handed, hold it up really, really well. Okay, now let's have a look at the shock mount. The shock mount is really nicely designed and fits snugly into the cold short, or as it's designed for the Sony NI shoe. It also has a quarter 20 thread mount on the bottom for attaching thing, it to things like a tripod or a microphone stand. There's a small cable management clip here, and the microphone itself attaches inside the microphone like this, and then it clicks shut like that. Okay, now let's get into the main cons of this microphone. The first thing would have to be its extremely weak signal. I've had to plug it into the Ceremonic SRPAX1 preamp to get a decent enough signal out of it. Without this, it becomes very hissy, and you have to boost it in post. The cable on this microphone is a 3.5mm cable with gold conductors. This is a really nice touch for premium quality, but it would be really nice if the cable came out of the microphone instead of being soldered in like this one. Another thing I don't really like about this microphone is the very tip here. I've had the dead cat on sometimes, and then I'll pull the dead cat off and this little piece of plastic will go with it. Okay, now let's take a look at some of the things that are the reason I got this microphone. So first off, it has this low cut filter here, which is really helpful for me when I'm filming in big busy locations and I need to cut out all of those low rumbling frequencies. One of the other things I really like about this microphone is its shape. A lot of microphones are not like this shape, especially around this price range. You're looking at the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and the Rode VideoMic NTG. All those cables come out the side, and that's really not ideal for if you're putting it inside something like a mic stand or anything like that. Okay, this microphone comes in around the $400 New Zealand dollar price point, so that's that many US dollars. And considering that it's a Sony microphone and it's got really nice sound quality, I can see how they can put that price tag on it. Although there is a lot of competition in this market, you're looking at the VideoMic NTG and the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So I can see why this microphone is not very popular. All things considered, I don't think it's really worth $400. I think it should be more worth about $200 with really nice sound quality. Because then it would be more reasonable to buy this microphone and a nice preamp like the Ceremonic. Okay, now we've got the physical features of the um, microphone out of the way, let's do some audio tests. Alright, so here is the audio set I've been using to record the entire thingy up until now. Um, as you can see here, I have the shotgun microphone on top, the Saramonic SRPAX1, and then it on a tripod. Plugged into the preamp is this Boyer FBY-MM1 lavalier microphone, which I've been using to record audio for the duration of this video. And then I've also got this microphone here. Okay, now let's switch over to the audio from this microphone here. Okay, so now this is coming straight out of the microphone. So, um, yeah, what do you think? This is it about a hand away from my mouth. Right back, it'd be about half a meter away. And then we're coming right up, really close. So for all these tests, I have... Oops, that's not good. For all these tests, I have no post-processing done. I do for the rest of the video using this lavalier. I've got a DS and a noise removal software running in Final Cut Pro. This microphone here is obviously plugged into the preamp with the gain set at max. On my camera the gain is set at the first box. Okay so let's get into the tests. So this is what it sounds like about 25 centimeters away from my mouth and this is what it sounds like about half a meter away and this is what it sounds like right up close. Okay, so we'll just keep this microphone on and we'll talk a little bit about the way that this microphone is best used. 
So the way that this microphone is best used, I find is up close, like this, talking head shots. I've been using it as a backup mic for the rest of this video. Normally for my videos, I would use this for my talking head videos. This is the microphone I go for. Okay, so now let's put the dead cat on it. Okay, so now I've got the dead cat on the microphone. So as you can see, it's just the normal size dead cat. Um, the audio levels are coming from this should be a little bit quieter now. So we'll come right up close to the microphone again, and we'll just slowly back off. So here we're 25 centimeters away, and now we are all the way back at that half a meter mark. So now I'm just going to like bounce it around a little bit. Just to test what the shock mount's like. And now this is me wiggling the whole system. Okay, so now I'm going to try and do those exact same tests again with this dead cat on. But only have the gain at half. So now we're right up close. We've only got the gain at half. 25 centimeters away, and we're more like half a meter away now. So that was the gain at half. Okay, so I've just hopped outside, and I have the Sony microphone with the preamp and my camera there. So as you can see, it's pretty windy outside in the trees, so this will be a pretty good test to see what the wind's like with the stead cat. So, um, I am currently, okay, now I'm about a meter away from the microphone. Two meters away, three meters away, four meters away, five meters away. So this is about five meters away from the microphone, I'm talking at a fairly normal level. Okay, now I'm yelling at the microphone, audio test one, two, three, and we've got a big gust of wind. Okay, so I'll hop back inside, and quick disclaimer before we get into the conclusion for this video. All of the tests that have been, I've been done doing today all have been done without any post-processing done. For the rest of the talking head videos, like this talking head video here, I have a DSA and a noise removal software running in Final Cut Pro. Okay, so in conclusion, I think this microphone's great for anyone who wants to do filmmaking style stuff or running gun or documentary. It's not so great for vlogging because obviously there's a lot of limitations when it comes to the signal when you need the preamp. But at the end of the day, it's a really good microphone, and the sound quality coming out of it is really good. I would definitely buy this microphone again, because it ticks all the boxes that I need as a filmmaker and someone who just likes to make videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any feedback for me, please um, put it down in the comments. It's really, really appreciated. Um, thanks for watching.